Good, back hour. Welcome to the third, fourth installment of Rev Science, as organized by uh, Ikon Nikolic, who can't be here tonight. Um, I've got the pleasure to introduce uh, Martin Barnier, who's going to explain something about uh, privacy by design. But before I give the floor to Martin, um, I'll give a, a very brief explanation on what uh, the legal requirements actually are, more or less. And uh, I'll do this uh, according to uh, these three slides. Briefly, the sources of the, of the rules, the, the major concepts, and the actual obligations. So, um, we have quite a few wonderful conventions on human rights. Um, the most recent and most important one, actually, one is the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union, which has come into force since the Lisbon Treaty. And um, building further on those, uh, set uh, the, the, is, uh, the data protection direct directive as implemented in the Netherlands in the Wetbeschermingsgegevens. The similar legislation elsewhere in Europe is the Data Shoots Gesetz and the Data Protection Act in the UK. But they are all implementations of the same data protection directive. Um, the concepts of which I'll uh, briefly explain now. Um, the idea is that personal data may be processed if certain conditions are met. <coughs> However, there is a group of exceptions to so-called sensitive data. Um, you should think about medical data, data about uh, sexual preferences, religion, race, uh, criminal uh, proceedings, uh, membership of unions. It's always wonderful to see the unions have lobbying power in these uh, processes. Um, if the data includes such data, then the rule is you can't process the data unless certain conditions are met. But as a rule of thumb, you can say, well, personal data, you can, you can process that, provided that you meet certain legitimate purposes, and the processing must be proportional to that legitimate purpose. For example, you could ask the question, given that the transport companies never needed to know what actually what your actual travel patterns were, to what extent the processing of personal data in, in the way of the, your travel data through the over chip card is proportionate to their purpose to have more proper accounting for the proceedings. I'm, also, I'm merely asking a question here. Um, you as a, the, the subject of uh, the data processing have certain rights and that's mostly about transparency. You can ask a data processor, what personal data of me do you have? Why are you processing? What are you processing for? In what way? And um, can I look into it? Because you also have a right to correct any mistakes in the data. However, I have to say, the Data Protection Directive is not uh, enforced for police and intelligence services. So if you drop by with the police and say, what kind of data are you processing about me? They can deny such a request. Also very interesting, and that's uh, more into Martin's speech, I suppose, is that you have to take safety, technical and organizational measures to ensure the safety of the data, the security of the data, but also the correctness and the integrity. Data loss is an equal problem or um, introduction of errors in data as, as, as uh, a leak of data. And those appropriate technical and organizational measures depend on the nature of the data and the cost of the, the measures and the state of the industry more or less. And again, as a rule of thumb, the more complex the data is, the more thorough you have to be, here. the more sensitive the data is, you have to be more thorough in that respect. And the volume of the data is another factor to take into account. Um, bigger databases are inherently more interesting from this perspective. And by extension, the idea that you can only process data as far as proportions for your legitimate purpose, that means that you actually have to minimize the processing of personal data in your organization. <coughs> However, 
I'm now getting to the actual concepts in the data protection directive. Um, my main thesis will be you can't do privacy by design. I'll explain why. First of all, the notion of personal data is any data that directly or indirectly is related to a so-called natural person. The deaf don't have privacy, basically. Only the living have it. Well, directly related to a natural person is easy. But, for example, your postal code, does it directly relate to you? No, it doesn't. But you can easily combine it with other data about you in order to get to you. I mean, how many persons of your age live at your postal code? Or how many persons of your age with your sex, uh, uh, with, uh, male, female, um, and wearing glasses live at your postal code. Each of these parts of the data would not constitute personal data, but if you can combine them together, you'll end up with a particular per uh, natural person, and therefore it is personal data, only personal data indirectly related to it. Um, but this, obviously, is very context-sensitive. The data subject, that is you. The, the controller is the entity which controls the means and the purposes in, of, uh, for which the data is being processed. And the data processor is the part who actually processes. That can all be, all be the same person. The notion of processing is basically everything you can do with data. Merely storing data is pro processing personal data. And to give you another example, why I don't think you can do privacy by design because it's so complex sensitive. Uh, imagine you write software for the management of buildings. For example, to keep a database, what kind of heating system a building has, how many elevators there are, what kind of air conditioning is there, etc. That's all definitely not personal data. <coughs> now imagine that the software you write is being used by companies which rent houses still not very interesting. There are usually several persons at particular houses uh, living, living in those houses. In my professional experience, we had a case of a institution for the severely impaired people. We talk about severe mental impairments and severe physical impairments. They were using the same type of software to keep a database in which um, so-called living units there were oxygen installations for people with severe lung uh, issues, where there were other changes in, in the building, for example, um, uh, uh, completely flat surfaces to enable wheelchairs. All of a sudden, this piece of software was being used to process medical data effectively. The original makers of that particular piece of software never put in the security measures you should have to pr process medical data because in their world it was being used for much more benign purposes or less benign depending on how you look at it um, <coughs> and it's called function creep but this is not even function creep the, 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 the functions for which it was intended was being used although the, the functions were being used in a different context yeah. and because of that particular context being healthcare all of a sudden this software probably was not up to par when it came to security measures. <coughs> and this, you see the same thing with, uh, especially with data that indirectly relates to a person. Quite often, a lot of data is in several organizations which indirectly relates to a purpose do, to a person but combined still do not give the full picture. Then another little piece of data is introduced in the same organization. All of a sudden, it becomes related to an actual person, without people even realizing it. And with all the legacy systems surrounding the data, which previously was not even personal data, now has become personal data because of the introduction of us other systems elsewhere in the organization. And we don't even talk about function creep. The function is still the same, the data is still the same, but because of the different organizational context, the changes in that context, the data has become personal data. And even if the programmer knew that he should design the system in such a way that he was minimizing personal data. In the original context, it wasn't personal data, therefore he met the ID privacy by design, and now he didn't. Um, but uh, those are the licenses of the pictures I used. I mean, 
as a lawyer and you have to adhere to the proper uh, Creative Commons licenses. I now give the floor to Matthijs. Okay, thank you.